Interactors Brokers Chairman and Founder Thomas Petterfee. He is on the phone in Connecticut. Uh, Interactive Brokers among the platforms that did start restricting trading of stocks that have run up rapidly, including GameStop. They did that earlier today. Uh, Thomas, good to have you here with Tim and myself. First of all, why did you stop the trades? What was the nail in the coffin that made you ultimately decide to do it? And I'm curious if you were getting calls from either clients, investors, or even your board that you had to do something. Uh, So first of all, I'm in sunny Palm Beach. Oh, Thank okay. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wish I was we told there. Connecticut. I wish I was there too. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me onto the show. Yes. Uh, the answer is yes. So uh, this stock today, game, stock, game, game, GME, uh, it was at one point as low as, two, as $112 and one point as high as $483. Currently, it is trading at two hundred and thirty-four dollars. Um, so, why did we uh, resort to these measures? It, we did because we are extremely concerned about the continuing viability of intermediaries, the clearing houses, and the brokers. Now, why is that? Because on every option contract, there is a buyer and a seller. So, a number of for each number, each each option contract that that exists in the world, there is a loser and a and a winner. The broker stands between the broker and the clearing house stands between the winners and the losers. The broker has to collect from the losers, give it to the clearing house. The clearing house gives it to the winners broker and gives it to bro- winners broker gives it to the winner. The problem arises when the loser loses more money than is in his or her account, Mm -hmm. right? Now, there are currently um, 3 million options contracts outstanding on gain. The average option contract, since the stock has moved around so much, I estimate the average option contract is worth about $10,000. So on on 3 million contracts, half of them are worthless, half of them are worth on the average of $10,000. That's that's $15 billion of of winners and losers, right? right? So now the brokers have to collect from the losers and pay it to the winners. If they can't, they have to put up their own money, right? Right. So uh, luckily enough, we have a very large uh, um, capital base of $9 billion, and we have uh, automated liquidation systems, but many of other brokers do not have that. But, but so, can I, if I, Thomas, if I can break in, and we should point out that Interactive Brokers is a sponsor of Bloomberg Radio and Bloomberg TV. So it's not the case that traders were doing anything wrong or illegal. It's just a case of logistically there were going to be problems, right, in terms of clearing houses. So that's more an operational problem versus a market problem or traders doing something wrong, correct? No, 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 not correct. So, so short squeezes are illegal. Now, when, when you buy a stock for $300 that a month ago was worth a failing company, right, a, you know, a, basically a, a second-hand store for for video games, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it wasn't really worth any um, much money. And it's not trading at, at $230, right? So your only motivation to buy that stock, which you know full well eventually will go down to $17, is, is that, I'm sorry, there is... I don't know what's happening. That's okay. We're all getting a lot of Skype calls at home when working from home these days. Yeah, right. Um, right. So you go ahead. Go ahead. I want you to finish that thought. Uh, if I may, if I may continue, please. So your only motivation to buy this stock of two hundred and thirty dollars could be to join the short squeeze. Because why would this stock go up? Why is it worth two hundred and thirty dollars? It's worth you know under twenty dollars. Are right, right. Are you are you guys closing out? accounts are you closing closing out positions we learned just minutes ago that robin hood has told users that it may close some at-risk positions thomas i don't know if you can i don't know if you can hear us yeah 
I can hear you now. I just didn't hear you before. That uh, three positions. What did you mean? Yeah. Are you are you closing out any accounts? We did know that Robinhood says that it told users that it may close some at risk positions. Oh, 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 we have we have closed thousands of positions. We have we have twenty uh, as of yesterday morning. We had twenty seven thousand customers who were involved in in uh, GME stock uh, either via the stock or via options. Is this many a, of them, of course. Yeah. Many, many of them, uh, especially since we have tend to have uh, professional customers, they tend to be on the short side. So yes, we closed out many of those positions. And was a lot of the the positions that you closed out? I mean, I'm I'm curious about in terms of your business, how much is retail in, investors, individual investors, versus bigger institutional clients? So well, it's hard to spell. Our our average client account is is uh, rough, is just under three hundred thousand dollars. So they are not your regular mom and pop uh, clients. But of course, many of them are smaller, and many of them are much bigger. But uh, three hundred thousand is just the average. We have one point one eight million customers. So yeah. Hey, you know, Thomas, you know, it's hard and I think we're trying to get our head about it. I have lots of conversations with, you know, big name shops, too, and and investors who say, you know, we're increasingly trying to open up alternative investments to individual investors, give them access to the types of investments that the bigger institutional clients typically have. And yet I feel like when a smaller retail investor to some extent acts like one of the big guys, all of a sudden their hand gets slapped. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 so I don't think that's true. So short squeezes are not legal. Now, mm. maybe many of the longs here do not know that they are participating in a short squeeze. But uh, that, that, that's the only issue I see, that they inadvertently doing something that they shouldn't be doing. But it's, it's really stupid to look at a stock and buy it at $300, and you know that it's a, it's a little business, right? It's a... It's a corner store. <laughs> Thomas, we only have uh, 15 seconds for this, but are you worried yeah. that there's going to be a PR impact from this and retailer traders will go to other trading platforms? Uh, I don't think so because our professional customer understands that we have to protect the marketplace for their sake and their money we have to protect. Do you think regulators, just quickly, 20 seconds, have to get involved from Congress and others? Uh, I think unless regulators come out and say that uh, trading should be in these stocks for liquidation only, yeah. it, uh, this is going to continue indefinitely, and that's not good. Thomas, I know it's been a busy day, uh, and we really appreciate you finding some time for us. Interactive Brokers Chairman and Founder Thomas Petterfee joining us on the phone. Interactive Brokers, a sponsor of Bloomberg Radio. 